Hello everyone and welcome to the Green Man channel and also to Shoegaze93 who is also um, putting this video up and we're going to be talking about Ride's fourth studio album Tarantula and doing a bit of a deep dive into this record uh, which came out back in March 1996. Um, and we're going to sort of do like three rough rounds of discussion here. We're going to talk about the road to the album, a bit of our kind of first in, in initial thoughts on it. Then we're going to talk a bit more about the tracks and maybe pick out, you know, a few that we kind of maybe like or dislike. And then we'll do a final round talking about how it stands today and um, where we might even rank it in the ride discography. Because it's an interesting album to talk about and uh, joined by Sam. So, yeah, how are you, Sam? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you once again. Yeah, done lots of band stuff over the weekend with with my own band Breather. called Breather. Breather. So yeah. I'm in good spirits. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Yeah, okay. So this album, um, do you want to kick off? Do you want to talk a bit about your initial thoughts and, and the road to this album? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, obviously, Ride on my favourite band. I have to state that first of all. So it's a bit a <laughs> um, bit, bit heartbreaking that I have to kind of maybe bring it down perhaps you know have to slate them a bit for this album uh, because yeah it is it is a bit of a stinker but there are reasons that I would go into as as to why that is you know I don't think it was entirely their fault uh, and they weren't up to their full potential at the time but yeah interestingly my story with this album would be uh, I listened to We're Going Blank Again was the first album I listened to by them because my stepdad had uh, Leave Them All Behind on his iPod, which became my favourite song of all time quite quickly. Just it sort of got everything that I, I want from music in that song. Um, and then so obviously then I checked out the rest of that album, Going Blank Again, and then I went to Nowhere because I saw that was like really highly rated. So yeah i heard the best two albums first and then carnival of light was my that was the third the third listen and then i think tarantula yeah like a couple of months after and i could see the sort of regression a little bit <laughs> yeah i mean there's um what i read about a lot with this album is like this rising tension between andy bell and mark gardner and the uh, you know, in the previous album, I didn't realise on Carnival of Light, they were sort of, they split the tracks between them because of that tension. So Mark wrote one half of it and then Andy wrote the other half or something. So they, they didn't really truly collaborate so much on it, which is interesting, except obviously, you know, with the songs themselves, performing the songs. And then you've got this album where, um, you know, Mark's not really on it much at all. Apart from a couple of tracks, um, which we'll probably talk about soon anyway, but I, I think the tracks were, um, was it, what was it called? Um, da -da 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 -da. Deep Inside My Pocket, I think he was on that one. Yeah. Um, and Riding yeah. or something, I think was the other track. Yeah, because that's um, Deep Inside like My Pocket wind. is, uh, that's Mark's like diss track to Andy Bell. Uh, they both had their like diss tracks on there apparently like ones they wrote about each other and andy bell was his one to mark gardner was castle on the hill like uh, implying that yeah. mark took too much control or something of the band perhaps mm. and then deep inside my pocket could mean like you know mark referring to that andy sort of chasing the money maybe like with the yeah. whole like oasis obsession and stuff yeah yeah interesting yeah i yeah, interesting. i get that i mean he went on to join oasis didn't he yeah in 2000 yeah yeah, yeah. and, and was, I um, Hur like there was another band in between called hurricane number one which was you know which was like uh pretty much like oasis light you know they they had like a gruff singer and andy was the main songwriter but andy was just on guitar for them but they yeah. they got like a front man with like an attitude and a gnarly voice a raspy kind of gnarly voice so he, Andy kind of he edged his way towards the Oasis style you know he got closer to it with like each project I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah you need to you should listen to them they, they, they're not bad actually Hurricane number one they've got a good song called Step Into My World which is it's really good and Andy's got this massive solo at the end of it um, quite 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 Pink Floydy, I guess actually the mm. solo it's got quite a lot of emotion in it yeah, right. Okay. 
but, yeah. yeah i might have to i might have to check that out then interesting yeah um yeah you can definitely hear the o- oasis creeping in to this record uh, tarantula and there's even there's one or two tracks that you can, i could almost picture you know um the gallagher's you know delivering a performance too um but it's sort of the thing was with this album i know it didn't feel like it you know, with Oasis, there's a certain swagger and attitude in all their songs. And mm. with Ride doing this style, I didn't feel it's like suiting to them as as certainly from mm. the earlier material. I didn't really feel the fit of that. That I can see what they were doing and that they were under pressure to sort of maneuver themselves into more Brit pop yeah. territory. So they were they were on the same label as Oasis. They were both on creation records. Yeah. And Alan McGee was like I think he was like always telling bands to like kind of mold themselves into something, and mm. he, you know, he was thinking like profit wise. Yeah. Um. By the mid nineties, anyway. Yeah. I think yeah. he, he was he was good though. I think uh, Alan McGee. I do like him, like especially, like in the period the eighties and early nineties. I think, like he was he was in it for the good, right reasons, and then mid nineties. I think maybe the the money and the drugs got the better of him. Yeah, well, yeah, I, there's a whole story there I probably don't but know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I read read a lot of the Creation Records books. There's some really oh. interesting reads. Um, yeah, Creation Creation Stories. The book is very good. That's pretty much a biography. Um, or was it autobiography? When because uh, it's written by Alan McGee. Would that be biography or, or auto? So I get the two mixed up. Wait, auto, when, I think auto. I think it's autobiography. Alan McGee is pretty much doing the autobiography about creation and there's other good reads as well but anyway um yeah, I think that they were supporting <laughs> each other as well at gigs yeah. apparently like 94 95 so riding riding oasis were playing together yeah. yeah and yeah like what you were saying i think a couple of the songs i think you can sort of hear like mark and andy are like trying to put on this kind of like this gnarly bit a bit of attitude in their voice you know and it's, it doesn't quite work, you know, it's not quite, it just doesn't suit their voices, but it just seems a bit try hard in, in a few places. Yeah, the, the album had a Deep inside mixed. my pocket, you know, Mark's like, deep inside my pocket, <laughs> you know, like really accenting the words like Liam Gallagher would. So you can sort of hear some kind of try hard. Totally, totally. Um... The reception was kind of mixed. I thought it was, there were a lot of, uh, you know, critical reviews. Um, I look at the list online, you know, and there was the select magazine of the 90s were quite generous. I think that was maybe the most generous score that I saw was like that got gave them that 8 out of 10 for this album. Um, NME gave it 6 out of 10. I think it's about fair. They're quite generous, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, interesting. And, and Pitchfork, 5.4 out of 10. Although I don't think that review was written until quite some time after the album release. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, I I, I guess I guess the initial thoughts just that, you know, it's, it's definitely not a ride album I would pull out um, to listen to. Um, no. I don't think, you know, even Carnival of Light, I, I'd rather listen to that, to be honest, than, than this one. Um, yeah, I do. I quite, Carnival of Light, I remember when lockdown was happening. Um, I remember listening to that in the summer, like it must have been like June, July um, of 2020. And it was it was nice just sat in the garden, you know, because you couldn't do much during lockdown. I, I remember just, you know, drinking and listening to it in the garden. Listen and, to uh, Ride, listen to She Goes. Yeah, but I mean, the, Good the way album. Good the time. I've just, <laughs> yeah. But like, I'm talking about Carnival of Light specifically, and it actually sounded good with the, just the summer vibe to it. It just had this kind of, you know, summer of love kind of vibe mm. to it. And I think I know it helped. 60s because of the 60s early 70s style yeah um and i thought that um you know i quite liked it i liked it more just because of the scenario and the mood and everything of the um of the summer yeah but yeah. i don't isn't you know i think it's okay in the summer i think there's some good tracks on it like you could be of uh, tarantula there as well no i i did i did get it i did get it at one point but because I haven't bothered to dig it out again. <laughs> Show it shows that it's not too good. Uh, 
I like um, that Moonlight Medicine is really good from this one. That's featured John Lord from uh, the opening track, Deep, yeah. Deep Purple on the uh, organ. Yeah. And it was uh, produced good by John, John Leckie, who, who's produced, you know, Radiohead, The Bends and Stone Roses. You know, he did lots of classic stuff, lots of the post-punk stuff like XTC and Magazine and that. Yeah. He was a like, tape operator as well on um, like George Harrison's solo stuff. So I think Ride of Always works with great um producers and engineers because they worked with alan Mulder on the first two and then john lecky so they're like a lot of my engineering heroes right. i'm not sure i'm not sure who produced tarantula oh say, say i saw on the back. that I, I did read it earlier but now i think i've forgotten richard somebody i think um yeah. can't remember but, but yeah, yeah the band the yeah. band had already split by the time tarantula came out yeah that's right and it was only on the roster of the label for a week or something before they took it off wow that's what i heard oh yeah 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 i think i remember reading that yeah, yeah. wow interesting stuff well yeah so they must have split up and then i guess mm. they just took it off yeah hmm. should we go into some of the tracks then should we talk about the yeah, tracks yeah. um do you want to talk about any sort of standout tracks that you or any tracks you like first yeah um well i think the first track i think i do like quite like that one the um oh what's it called again do 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 it's all right black night crash black night crash yeah i like that one um i just i think yeah i think ride have always done a good um opening track to an album i think like moonlight medicine with uh carnival of light you got seagull on nowhere Leave leave them all behind on on going blank again. So, I think I think they've been consistent with the first tracks, and I think Black Knight Crash is it's good for the, that style. You know, for that punk style, punky side of Britpop kind of style. I think is a good track for that genre. You know, I think the riff is good. The do 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 do. So it's like sort of walk down. You know, like descending, and I quite like that. And remember the yeah, remember the guitar licks are good, aren't they? Lots of like little wah bits. Like wow, 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 wow. Yeah, I quite like that. <laughs> the drums are quite frantic. Um, yeah. Another track I like is um, "Walk on Water," which is oh. probably that's my favourite off off the whole album. Actually, I would say "Walk on Water," which is like track f um, track four, I think. Yeah, I quite like that one actually. So Just, that's um, sort of a, a love song type lyrics. Insane. yeah like um, yeah, yeah I, was, but I don't yeah. want to try and sing that one actually because i'm pretty sure i could <laughs> sing that one so i'm not going to try but... <laughs> yeah yeah i'm not either <laughs> but um yeah that's it i'll walk on water for you and yeah i walk, mm. acro walk across the sea that's yeah that's the yeah. line um to get you close to me and i like the guitar work it's like 12 string rick and backers by the sounds of it yeah it's got that real like chime chimey sound jingle jangle and i think it's a well-worked song you know i think and you can't really say that about many other tracks on it a lot of it just seems like very like stitched together and the mixing is a bit questionable questionable mm -hmm. at times you know like just sort of some of the guitar and i mean it's crazy me saying this i mean obviously i like noise and stuff but it just isn't organized the noise you know it's, it's you get these like distorted like stabs don't you guitar stabs and i think it kind of gets it gets in the way of the vocals or the drums something like that you know it comes out it's not very like not compressed enough maybe or something like that yeah, yeah. i mean i probably don't quite know enough about production but i know what you mean it, it doesn't sound like everything does sound a little bit forced forced yeah, yeah that's the word forced Mm. and yeah well that uh, dead dead man i was listening to before this video started which is track three and yeah i didn't like that at, at all it starts off a bit like sweet home alabama or is that just me <laughs> um i can't remember i can't remember the intro to it i just remember <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> but, um yeah but there's a song was it track two sunshine slash run to nowhere and I got this from some like there was a 2001 box set which has got like unreleased demos and stuff. Cool. And there's a song called um, "She's So Fine," which is like track track uh, four on it. 
and it's basically that song but it's reworked it's like different lyrics and different production okay. and i i prefer this demo version much better than the sunshine nowhere to run no, the one that run, ended yeah. up on the album because it's you get this like nice frobbing ba- bass line that's like do 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 this like dancing bass line you know like quite like reggae-ish like, in a way and it's just mixed much better and Loz is doing something better with the drums like the fills and stuff are really impressive and it's they they made it really they made it too cluttered and stuff it they didn't have the clarity on the um the sunshine nowhere to run the reworking of it so i prefer the demo to that song so that was a bad choice there that they made and um what else is on the album um i think burning's quite good from a guitar solo perspective i think burning's one of the better tracks um it's got you know it's like dun, 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 dun. It's like the main riff is quite like rolling stonesy i guess like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> sounding more like a game show or something than <laughs> but uh like a game show i think you were going towards countdown there. yeah maybe <laughs> but uh yeah so i would say my favorite tracks are burning uh black knight crash and walk on water and as for the rest of it not so good mm. oh there, there is ride the wind as well which i think is a mark track yeah, which I thought was okay. Mark was involved in that. Ride the wind. I thought that one was okay. Yeah, but they, apart from those four tracks, yeah, not not very good. Yeah, we're pretty similar. I think we're pretty lined up. Yeah, Black Knight Crash is one of my definite favorites on the album. Um, this is always just quite a solid rocker. It, you know, it, it's not necessarily anything super incredible but it's it's a good start for the album i thought and compared to a lot of the other songs it's definitely one of the stronger points um walk on water we said you know exactly what you said i i I like that track it's my slightly preferred more sort of on the love song side of things there's another love song in here that i I don't like which will come to i think as a match of course um and yeah this that that one's actually pretty good and it it stuck with me out of all the songs I was going to bed the other night and I was thinking of the chorus of, <laughs> oh, well, okay, you know, mm. uh, going to bed with that in my head. So, uh, yeah. And um, I think I quite actually quite liked it. Was, it was the, uh, you know, one of the tracks which maybe was Andy getting at Mark, uh, The Castle on the Hill, mm. or vice yeah. versa. I think it was Andy getting at Mark, yeah. Um, I, I liked that one as a as a song. I, I thought there was an element of songwriting and lyricism that is actually quite good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, still not a, not a great. Yeah, not yeah a very song, very mellow, mellow mode, acoustic style, nice. isn't it? Yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Mellow, mellow acoustic. Yeah. And um, I don't know about the rest of the album. I mean, Starlight Motel was almost something I could vibe with a bit. Mm. Um, like you said, burning. There are some good sort of bluesy guitars. Lick. There's like some, yeah. you know, definitely some good guitar work occasionally on this album. You get where it kind of goes into some some cool licks and yeah. stuff. I mean, you maybe be able to better describe what he's doing on the guitar, but it's some good stuff there. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's why I like the burning song. Yeah, I think that's very good for the guitar work. I mean, it might even be too too long for some people. Yeah, I do think it, that, it did go on a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think you know some of the structures aren't good, are they? And they just sort of throw a guitar solo in, you know, just to kind of fill the space. It, yeah, sometimes it feels a bit like desperation for ideas, kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, but you are right though. There are some there's some good playing. Obviously, it's mostly the pentatonic scale stuff, but. You know, it's pretty much what most guitarists use most of the time anyway. I like the the double stops that they do makes it very bluesy. You know, the yeah. doubles the double stops when you you're using two strings, isn't it? You're just sort of hammering it on and pulling off. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I think Andy, yeah, Andy's always been a good player. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, should we move on to the tracks we didn't like as much? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I pretty much mentioned mine, so it's over to you, I think. Over to me. Um, yeah, Mary Ann. Really didn't like that. I couldn't, Mary, yeah. I couldn't get through the seven, almost seven minutes of it as well. 
Yeah, the, the yeah. vocals are, are quite cringy, aren't they, on some yeah. of these songs? Yeah. Like, you know, they don't know whether to sort of go gritty or whether to, like, go whispery, do they? It's, it's a, you know, they're quite confused. It's conflicting. Yeah, that one's, I didn't really enjoy it. I, I've, I also thought, like you, Sunshine Nowhere to Run was a little bit boring. Um uh well so I don't, yeah i i think um gonna be all right also didn't do much for me at all um it, it wasn't all right yeah. <laughs> but far from all right <laughs> uh dawn patrol well that was okay actually that wasn't too bad that wasn't too bad yeah uh, i think I, li I listened to that one before coming on i think yeah but it didn't really stick out for me no yeah I mean, that, those are probably my least favourites, I think. Um, I mean, Dead Man one? as well. I didn't really like Dead Man much. So, yeah, I think I think the ones that I actually liked were sort of very similar to yours. Black Knight Crash, Walk on Water, A Castle on the Hill, and maybe Burning or Starlight Motel at, at the end, mm. um, I would say, were my, the, the parts of the album I actually could uh, could enjoy but yeah the rest of it was was a bit of a slog a bit of a slog to get through um all right then well uh shall we now talk a bit about um our overall thoughts and whether yeah. this would be i guess it's maybe a full thumbs conclusion. up or down or sideways maybe yeah <laughs> or if it's our sort of least yeah where it comes in the ranking. All right yeah the ranking would be good yeah, yeah. i mean i've got the the old catalog here haven't i most of it anyway so i can hold the cds up maybe so all right well this one you know it's going to be joint top with uh going blank again <laughs> all, all signed that's a bit of an escape joint top <laughs> yeah i think yeah. it's hard it's hard to yeah that's no, I mean, true like, they're, they're both top out. i mean this is really creative isn't it i mean it's not just you guys. Oh. You get Kraut Rock Elements. You get, uh, you know, you know proto Britpop, pretty much. Uh, yeah, there's lots of stuff going on. So, yeah, very hard to say what's top, really. Maybe yeah, out of push, I would say nowhere, just about. Um, and then this one, I mean, I'll, I'll be rating the uh, the the post reunion ones as well, because Weather Diaries and this is not a safe place. Safe place. But... I was going to include them too, yeah, yeah. Just okay. they're just they're like full length ones, I guess. So I would give Weather Diaries that would be like third place then behind Nowhere and Going Blank again, and then I would say this is not a safe place fourth, and then uh, and then uh, Carnival of Light, and then unfortunately Tarantula gets the boo gets the last place. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I am. Pretty similar, to be honest. I reckon, yeah. I I, I would start the so I'll start do what you did. I'll start at the top. So at the very top, I think I would have going blank again. I think I just prefer that a tiny bit to nowhere. Then nowhere next. Um. Then yeah, I, I feel, think I, I'm a this is not a safe place guy. I I really dig that one in yeah. third, and then weather diaries fourth, and uh, then carnival of light fifth, and then this one sixth at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Putting this as safe place as third. Yeah, I can I can concur with that. I mean, certainly, like, yeah, future love and and uh, what else? The, the title track, isn't it? Yeah, even the title track, isn't yeah. it? R I D E is really good. It's like ride, but with the dots, so like a like an acronym style. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really good. I mean, what was the other one as well? You had um, jump jet on it, and uh, yeah. in this room was a really great um closer to the track to the album i mean um yeah, really good. but yeah i think i think i think i with going blank again i think the 11 tracks definitely helps the re reputation of it because nowhere only goes up to eight on the original copy apparently it stopped at vapor trail and they only added taste here and now and nowhere on later editions because I, I always thought it was an 11-track album, but an older fan corrected me, and they said that it only uh, the original only went up to Vapor Trails. It only had eight tracks on it. Okay. Mm. And I, I got a 2015 vinyl that even had the Today Forever tracks but added on it, so it's 15 tracks altogether. Yeah. 
So that was that's definitely the vinyl to go for if you if you want the shoegaze you ride. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting a. I've got to get sort of a hard copies of some of these ride albums because you know I I don't really have them as downloads at the moment. So, mm. um, yeah, quite, quite, that, quite, that, quite. that EP today forever. I wonder if I can get a hold of a hold of that on hard copy now. But... I think see. it's quite hard to get on vinyl, but I think CDs is CDs quite easy. Maybe. Yeah, I think eBay and D- Discogs. I get a lot of the stuff from Discogs. I do recommend them. Heard of them, Discogs? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you should be, should be able to get it. Yeah. So, yeah, was it, did you really like Unfamiliar? Did you on Today Forever, the first one? Yeah, that was a really good one. I, I quite like Senan. Effects. I think it was Senan yeah. and... The last track, especially that—that that was great. The, today, I think, yeah, um, that was really great. I think unfin- unfamiliar shows the reverb side a bit more because mm. they they have a lot of the reverb in the tremolo, that tremolo that cuts through everything. I really like that effect on it. Yeah, and then the, near the end, it sort of rises and falls, doesn't it? it has this whooshy effect to it. But like yeah, added a phaser a, there is a bit the the, the whoosh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, do you know what though? Talk, talking about Tarantula and and how different it is from those the, the EPs and, and the earlier albums, mm. I start to wonder if we, you know, if they've not been on hiatus for what twenty years um, or however long it was, <laughs> almost twenty years, I think. Mm. What we might have had from them in the two mm. thousands, you know, mm. say if they'd have still been carrying on into the late nineties and two thousands. Would they have just, you know, would they have reverted back a bit to their old sound by, by say, I don't know, 2000, 2004, 2005, who knows? But it would have been really interesting to see what, if they had released something then, how that would might be different from, say, Weather Diaries. or Because you know, Weather Diaries is quite yeah. dream poppy to me. It's it's not so, um, it'll jangle pop, you know. Yeah, well, the they, they went back with um, Alan Mulder the producer of the first two albums with with that with weather diaries yeah so they yeah they obviously thought about it and thought let's go back to the roots um errol errol Elkin as well he's like a dj electronic producer like a bit more of um my generation i would say yeah so they got him so they you know they weren't afraid to experiment which is good yeah, you know, getting an electronic guy for a guitar band is 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 quite a brave move. Yeah, you know, I, th- I think it worked out quite well. Hmm. But yeah, I think you're right. I mean, you could say that about a lot of the the, the shoegazy bands. You know, that if they carried on in, into the two thousands, you know, how would Slow Dive sound? How how would right? Yeah, Swerve Driver sound in the two thousands. What did we miss almost from from that era? Yeah. I mean, it's like, interesting. It's almost a topic for another, a whole nother episode or something, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What, yeah. what did we miss in, in, in if they had stayed together? Yeah. There we go. That could be. Um, it could be something Zoom. else. <laughs> could be a Zoom. There we go. You guys, something. She guys falls continuation. Yeah. The um, yeah, the alternative two thousands, like yeah, the alternate universe two thousands. Yeah. <laughs> could be yeah, good. That, that sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah we could, could, could get yeah could get another guest on for that as well. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. All right. Shall we? Uh, so, um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll bring things towards close then. So, so thanks very much, um, Sam, yeah. for joining me for this discussion about Rise Tarantula. Yeah. And uh, no don't problem. forget, people, to drop a sub to She Goes 93. I think you just hit 800. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I have been uploading quite a lot to, I'm pushing for that 1K. Yeah. Um, Kind of like Hector, I'm, I'm getting desperate. Yeah, he's nearly there, I think. He's I'm, very I'm close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll be celebrating that, that soon. That karaoke <laughs> video that he did. <laughs> I think I think that might have been a tactic to try and, you know, a bit, a bit of clickbait maybe to try and get those extra subs. A bit of karaoke never yeah. does any harm. Yeah, yeah. Well, a bit, but, of, um, bit of humor and, and stuff. Yeah. Do you want to also say a quick bit about your EP as well, The Breather? Yeah, so... Well, we've done, we completed one track yesterday, sounding very good. And we've got one that just needs overdubs. So 90% there. So that's going to be two of four tracks. So we're going to do, Josh, my bandmates, we were going to do an album, but we changed our mind to do two or three EPs instead. So we've got one EP out already. 
okay. which you know which you know about yeah but we're planning to get another one out there because we, we've been playing a lot of the new songs live but just haven't recorded them so we've got lots of songs but yeah not just not recorded so we're, we're really stepping on the gas now yeah yeah. So absolutely. maybe no. couldn't couldn't really tell you a release dates at the moment. Um, <laughs> it has to be mixed no and mastered. So it might even be December, January, something like that. New Year's. Really. Also, also looking forward to Ride. I think they've got something coming out. Oh. Next year because I know that they've played mo- this track called Monaco live. Uh, they keep playing this track called Monaco. Monaco. Yeah. When I saw I saw them in Taunton um in august played a gig in in somerset and they played a track called monaco and it's not even a single or anything but i think that will be the first single yep so i just typed in ride reveal seventh album scheduled for this year or next year but that was an update from november 2022 so obviously (laughs) so probably it's going to be next year i suspect yeah well they said it's already completed already at the gig they said uh mark said like it's done, right. but we're just waiting for the right moment to put it out. I'll I'll definitely be looking out for that. Yeah. Yeah. As I've enjoyed their last two albums so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely looking out for and that. And the track Monaco sounds a bit like um it sounds a bit like Jump Jet and Lanoi Point together. Mm, okay. Well it's in that is in that's that vein. Good. Hmm. Good. All right. Well, All right. Um, yeah. Well, we'll thanks we'll everybody. And uh yeah. don't forget to drop us up to the green man as well if you yeah didn't... likewise with this man here as well the green yeah. man <laughs> give him a sub he definitely deserves it uh, like in the horror the horror content, horror content. i have been horror. ramping up the horror content yes. alongside the music reviews recently so um yeah. yeah it's sort of running along with halloween a little bit but yeah. also just just know my heart no look yeah. i love my horror really so uh, all right thanks everybody for watching and until next time uh bye from me and from sam yeah. Take care. Take care. Bye.